We're here with Timothy Showalter of the University of Virginia Cancer Center to talk about his study looking at prostate cancer decision making, published in the journal Patient Preference and Adherence. Dr. Showalter, if you would, please tell us about the idea behind the study and the reason for it. Well, uh, my primary clinical specialty is in prostate cancer, and I see a lot of prostate cancer patients. And um, one theme that is very true is that prostate cancer treatment decisions are really complex. Uh, for most patients with localized prostate cancer, there are a multitude of choices. They range from active surveillance or, or close observation uh, to surgery uh, to various radiation therapy options. Um, and in counseling patients, it's often difficult to help them arrive at the right decision. Um, it's, there are national recommendations that suggest that physicians and patients should work together uh, to arrive at a, at a shared decision for prostate cancer treatments. However, it's often a challenge to really um, understand uh, what are the priorities for an individual patient in, in the counseling process uh, and, and what are the really primary uh, themes that should guide that discussion. Um, so because of that, uh, my goal was to review the existing uh, medical evidence uh, to better understand patient preferences for, for prostate cancer treatment decisions in hopes that I could provide some insight to help with uh, prostate cancer patients and their physicians. Can you tell us about that and give us an overview of the study? Sure. So this study was a systematic review of the available published literature. So we looked at any uh, published uh, papers on prostate cancer that reported primary research from the years of 1995 to 2012. Uh, we started off by reviewing over 600 uh, titles that we identified on a literature search and ultimately arrived at a final set of 21 articles. And those 21 articles represent the perspectives of over 4,000 prostate cancer patients uh, and uh, how they uh, process their prostate cancer treatment decisions and what their priorities and preferences were for treatment outcomes. If you would, please tell us about your main findings. Yeah, so uh, first off, we identified 21 articles uh, during the study period that met our specific uh, search criteria and they were included in the final analysis. Uh, this includes the perspective of over 4,000 men uh, face, who are faced with a prostate cancer uh, treatment decision. Uh, we found a relatively uh, high uh, quality of, of uh, studies in the published literature. And in order to evaluate quality and sort of uh, better understand the existing literature, we used a scoring system called the PREFS uh, uh, score, which was developed by my colleague, uh, Dr. John Bridges at John, Johns Hopkins University School of Public Health. Uh, and this rating system is, is useful for preference assessment research, and it helps us understand which elements are included in the published report and to evaluate the quality of the evidence um, as presented to the reader. Uh, and we found a relatively uh, good scores compared to uh, other published uh, examples of preference assessment in diabetes and in, in breast cancer as well. Um, so that was our starting point for understanding what the overall quality of the papers were. Uh, we next looked at uh, some characteristics of the study, such as funding source and where the patients come from. We did find a high representation of uh, patients from the United States uh, in the research. For me as a practitioner, of course, that's valuable, but it's possible that we, it underrepresents the perspectives of men in other countries. Uh, and we found a high rate of uh, funding from governmental sources or, or academic foundations uh, and a low rate of industry funding in the study, suggesting a, a low, low risk of bias uh, in the published findings. And importantly, there were some primary themes we identified. Uh, many of the respondents reported that their number one priority was the risk of side effects related to the cancer treatment, which isn't surprising to me. Um, and depending on the, the individual uh, patient uh, whose perspective was, was asked, uh, either the risk of impotence or the risk of gastrointestinal effects like diarrhea, or the risk of urinary incontinence could be the number one priority. So there was some variability there. And then on the other hand, some patients really strongly value uh, choosing the treatment that they perceive as more effective for curing their prostate cancer. And in general, those men are less likely to turn down um, a invasive uh, treatment like uh, radiation or surgery, uh, and, and uh, they're more likely to, to opt to choose a treatment other than active surveillance. And then another interesting theme that we identified was that for many patients, the perspectives of their family members and the physicians that they consult with and respect is incredibly important to the treatment decision-making process. Uh, in particular, we found a few studies that looked at uh, how patients feel about active surveillance as an option. And we found that family opinion and uh, physician uh, recommendation were, were main drivers um, of, on whether or not they accepted active surveillance as a treatment option. 
So what do these findings mean for patients then? What should they take from this? So I think for patients, uh, the primary uh, value of, of research like this is that it really summarizes the themes uh, for, that guide treatment decisions for other patients with prostate cancer. It could potentially help uh, articulate uh, one's, one's feelings about prostate cancer uh, treatment outcomes, and it uh, can provide some framework for understanding uh, you know, what, are, what are the sorts of reasons why people may choose one treatment or the other. Um, I think it, it also um, gives some perspective on uh, the level of involvement of uh, physician conversations and family members in their treatment decision process. And what about for you as a physician? Well, for me as a physician, I think it's, it's really useful information. Uh, it's also helpful in uh, educating our physicians in training as well to understand uh, how these sorts of decisions are made. Um, I'm particularly interested in uh, interventions to help guide and, and uh, improve uh, the decision-making process for prostate cancer patients. And one of the primary conclusions of this research is simply that any efforts that are going to be made to improve the information we have uh, to help patients uh, really make a decision that they're happy with um, really ought to involve uh, the, the physicians that they're, they're uh, in consult with as well as their family members to really have a shared dialogue among all the participants whose opinion matters to the patients. Well, thank you for talking with us. Thank you.